part time in accessorise and monsoon. And these people used to come in and do the windows and do the layouts and I thought, hang on a minute, at school no one told me about this job, actually maybe this is what I want to do. So I transferred off my teaching degree um, and swapped to do education and art for the community as a degree. And then I started working full time at um, Monsignor Accessorised in my last year. I opted to do two dissertations so I only had to go once a week so that I could work full time. I was really worried about coming out of university and not having a job at the end of it and I think that's partly why I'd gone into teaching. And then that summer when I finished university a job came up to be a window dresser at Monsoon which I applied for and didn't get and then two weeks later they phoned me back and said we think you'd actually be better suited to visual merchandising and off I went around the country in a car doing visual merchandising. And then a year later, a job came up um, within the office to be the person who created the children's guidelines for Monsoon, and I applied for that and got it, and then I worked my way up through the VM department at Monsoon, and in total I was there for 14 years before coming here to the work company. Um, I'm sure lots of people say this, but no two days are the same. Um, we might be working on setting up a new window to be signed off, which is what we're doing at the moment. We might be out in stores setting something up for a new season. We might be talking about a strategy for an coming season, so in a couple of weeks time we'll be starting work on spring. Um, or also as the head of the end, it might be managing the team as well and supporting them with their development. Um, I love the power of a transformation. I love a before and after, so I'm very happy watching TV shows where it's a before and after. And I think that's what visual merchandising gives you, whether it be a before a season as you're swapping into a new season creatively, or just going into a shop and supporting them and moving things around. Um, I love the power of a transformation. I think the most difficult thing in visual merchandising is coming to a compromise um, creatively. So part of visual merchandising is hearing lots of people's opinions um, and taking them on board and sometimes it's not down to whether something's commercially right or wrong or the figures behind it, it might just be personal opinion and finding a compromise that makes everyone happy is probably the biggest challenge. I've had the chance to work on so many projects, it's been amazing, but probably the most exciting was in 2019 we opened a pop-up shop in the Hamptons and we had a really short turnaround to be able to do it and we had a really small budget which made us much more like resourceful creatively. Um, I went over to the store with another visual merchandiser and we turned up, we got a car from New York and we drove ourselves, not me, I'm too scared, um, she drove us to the shop and we were handed a set of keys and that was it, we were setting up the shop in the Hamptons. Um, we had to use the equipment that was already there left from the previous retailer because it was just a pop-up but we had to make it look like the White Company brand. So even down to just buying some marble effect vinyl to put over a glass table to convert it from one thing to another um, just made us more resourceful because we were trying to do it on a really small budget. I think you have to be quite resourceful, I think you have to be really good at finding solutions, I think you need to be really good at taking feedback and that, like I mentioned, finding a compromise. There's absolutely an element of creativity in it as well, but I think if you can be helpful, solution driven um, and come with that positive attitude, I think that that can go a really long way um, without all of the experience behind it. One of the things we say as a business is um, perfect simplicity or simplicity for life and I think everything we do comes back to that inspiration for people to feel like they would like to achieve that in that home. So if you walk into one of our stores we want you to get the feeling of ah, that's like the best compliment we can get if someone says that. Um, and so we want it to feel like they're coming home, that we want them to be inspired by what we've done in the stores um, or even in the windows rather than just a traditional window display. Um, we want them to feel like, oh I could do that in my home or oh I want that in my house.
Um, so I was invited to be part of the mentor program and I've been mentoring Macy for um, just over a year now. I really loved meeting her, um, I love hearing about her courses, I love to know what she's learning, I love to hear her views on things as well and I really enjoy our chats. Covid kind of interrupted what I thought we would be able to do together in the mentoring programme. I thought she'd be able to come out to stores with me, I thought she'd be able to spend more time in the office. But we made it work through video and now where things have been a little safer, a couple of weeks ago she came into the office, which was really lovely I think for her to see where we work and see that environment. Um, and also um, for her to have that opportunity, almost like a practice of what it's like to turn up for an interview. Um, when I invited Macy to the office, I just gave her the address um, and as much as I wanted to go downstairs and pick her up from reception to make sure that she got here safely, I also wanted her to have like a practice run of what it's like when you come for an interview to be able to come in and find your way into reception and to ask for someone. I think it's amazing the courses and the content that you do. Um, I feel like I need to up my game when I speak to Macy because it's not the background that I had. Um, so I think it's incredible what the students learn and I think it's such a broad aspect of retail that I think that's amazing and I think that in normal circumstances when the students are able to do placements I think that's invaluable for their experience. I would love more people out there in retail to be involved in it um, because nothing beats that first-hand experience of what it is like working in the industry versus learning it and I think that network of people that you know um, will make such a difference. I think I was in such a lucky position. I turned up for an interview with no visual merchandising experience. Um, uh, I mean, it was 19 years ago. And But what I did take with me was what I'd done at university through my teaching and for my degree, and I used that as my portfolio. Um, I think in this day and age, the competition is so steep. Um, we put a job out there the other week for an area role, and within one day we'd had 100 applicants, and we had to take it off. So we'd advertised it that it would be up for two weeks, and we took it off after a day. So I think the competition is really steep out there and the thing that I guess I'd say to all people and I do in speaking to Macy is what makes you above and beyond. Um, probably out of those 100, probably all of them could have done the job, any of them could have come to work for us, um, but what makes them above and beyond that stands out in the first place to get through the sifting and then stands out in the interview process. I think the future of VM is a very interesting place. We are often the first thing to go in a business when um, money needs to be cut because it's sometimes hard to attribute how much money the VM team brings in and yet we can be quite an expense um, with our windows, with our props and with our salaries. So um, I think a lot of companies during Covid had to make some really tough decisions and a lot of people out there on the high street have got rid of their VM teams. And I think there'll be a temporary period where obviously in retail you're always working further in advance um, that maybe we can't see it at this moment in time but certainly within a year those retailers will look quite different because without anyone specifically with the skill to design their windows or specifically to help them with their layouts in store or um, props to help identify their brand I think um, the high street is going to look quite different and I think for the white company the visual merchandising team are very important. Um, the product can look quite consistent season to season because we have that very simple brand aesthetic and one white candle in a box can look the same as another. But the importance of us and our window design and our in-store is to tell the customer that that is something new and that's what she should be looking at. And I think we're a bit of a secret weapon when the rest of the high street are maybe missing the VM teams. Um, so yeah, it was an excellent question. <laughs>